What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be reviewing and breaking down The Flash Season 9 Episode 10, which of course is highly anticipated. So guys, the episode starts with a look in the future at Rick Cosnett's character, who, you know, we obviously don't exactly know who he's playing yet. Um, you know, the, the theory going into this was that it was going to be either Eddie or Malcolm Thawne. Uh, but anyways, I really did not expect to see him in the first scene, but it looks like he's walking around in Joe's house for whatever reason. I'm not sure if he, like, moves into Joe's house in 2049 or, w or what, but, you know, I thought that was a little bit odd. Uh, but we also find out that he works in Mercury Labs, so that must have been uh, where the Blue Crystal was at the end of season season 8. I actually think it might have said Mercury Lab somewhere. I don't know. I can't really remember. Uh, but anyways, we see Iris, who is extremely pregnant now, as well as, you know, her getting the news of her being nominated for a Pulitzer. But this is where Barry, Barry randomly vanishes from the loft and ends up in the year 2000. And when he vanished, he was surrounded by, like, this blue energy. So obviously, yeah, this had something to do with the blue crystal. So when Barry tries to time travel back to the present, he can't. Uh, he stopped because a portal won't open all the way, and when he can't get home, we get a little homage to The Flash Season 1, Episode 1, where he runs into a truck uh, right when he first got his powers, which is pretty cool to see. If you guys remember that from Season 1, we get a very similar scene to that in uh, this episode right here. Um, anyways, after time travel doesn't work, Barry goes to CCPD to try and ask Joe for help, um, who is actually, you know, obviously 23 years younger and is only a beat cop. Uh, Barry asks him for help, and the help Barry wants is to find Tina McGee, who obviously could help Barry get back to the future. Uh, but before Joe can help, Barry realizes that, you know, Barry realizes the day or the date and remembers that this is the day that his mother dies. So he leaves CCPD, and next we see him on the phone, and the person he was talking to was actually Martin Stein we didn't see Stein or anything like that uh, but we got to hear his voice again which was actually pretty cool uh, but obviously Stein thinks Barry is a prank caller because this is you know still the year 2000 he has no idea who Barry is yet um, and then you know just like we saw in the trailer Barry drops the phone as he sees his parents on the street but as he's walking toward them reverse flash comes out of nowhere and knocks Barry out which causes Henry and Nora to go you know check on him of course um, and then just like uh, what, what I thought might happen Nora looks at Barry and says he looks just like my father just like she did in the flash's season one finale which i actually thought was really cool um, so Henry and Nora take Barry to the hospital, where obviously Henry is still a doctor in this time. Uh, and when Barry comes to and sees his parents, it was such an emotional scene. Uh, we heard season one music, and it really felt like an earlier season episode, as Henry and Nora then invite Barry to lunch. Also, I forgot to mention, when they asked Barry what his name was, he said his name was Bart, which, you know, does make sense. Uh, meanwhile, at the crime scene where Reverse Flash knocked Barry out, the blue crystal is there, and Joe picks it up, and it seems to, like put Joe under some sort of control or something like that. Uh, but Barry, meanwhile, at lunch with his clueless parents, is invited uh, by them to stay at their house that night, and Barry gets extremely anxious, as obviously he knows what's supposed to happen that night, so he leaves quick. And, you know, when he finally stops, the original Eobard Thawne, aka Reverse Flash, shows up and, you know, just right in front of his face, and Barry instantly gets angry at him and nearly kills him, and he almost pulls a Reverse Flash on him. Uh, but, of course, that doesn't happen, as we've seen that a bunch of times. Barry accuses him of bringing him there, which, obviously, he didn't do as obviously that is the work of the Blue Crystal. So then we see Barry and Thawne sharing a drink, which was unexpected, but this is where Thawne goes insane, and you can tell how much he hates Barry, and I just love the rivalry between the two of them that we saw in this episode. Uh, this is also where Barry realizes that Thawne is here to kill him as a child, uh, and Thawne thinks he's won, right? He thinks Barry's only options are to kill him or to put him in Iron Heights ri and risking destroying the entire timeline, uh, but Barry knows that he has to save his younger self and it's, you know, it's that simple. Uh, he just have to witness his mother's death again, which he, of course, does not want to do. And keep in mind, this is the original version of Reverse Flash, so he's never been to this night before, and he doesn't know what's going to happen. So, in a sense, Barry actually has the upper hand here, because he's already lived this. Um, then Thawne basically tells Barry to say, it, quote unquote, it, and Barry says, you win, Thawne, I can't stop you, but obviously Barry knows what he has to do, yet of course, he's still extremely upset about what's going to happen to his parents. Uh, but anyways, Barry goes back to the hospital to see his parents, and just, you know, tells them how much they mean to him, even though he can't tell them that he's their son, which again, was a really emotional scene, uh, but after that, Barry hears a noise, and he follows it to Joe, standing in a hallway, and at first, Barry thinks it's like his Joe from 2023, which makes no sense because this is the year 2000 
thousand. So I don't know what Barry was getting after there. Uh, but anyways, Barry tells Joe that this is the night that Nora dies. But this is when we see Joe's eyes glow blue and hear him say he's been waiting for this night since the dawn of time. And obviously this means that Joe has been taken over by cobalt blue or the avatar of cobalt blue or the blue crystal or something along those lines uh, this is also where we see barry ask joe who he is and this is when we find out cobalt blue is the new negative speed force avatar or is essentially the new negative speed force avatar and he has some you know bigger plan up his sleeve um, as Joe knocks Barry down with some blue energy coming from the blue crystal. And now we have a little Joe versus Barry fight scene, which I never thought we would see on the show. Uh, but, you know, obviously, like I said, Joe has been taken over by the blue crystal. So that was really interesting right there. But basically, Barry, you know, starts to think, oh, if I'm facing the negative uh, speed force, I'm just going to, you know, think of positive things. And then that essentially uh, freed Joe from the, the Blue Crystal's control. Uh, and after the fight is over, uh, Barry sees the Blue Crystal, which just disappears. And, you know, Joe is back to his old self, as obviously he played a big role in the night of Barry's mother's murder. But then we see Barry line up against Thawne on the street at night, where Barry tries to convince Thawne to stop being evil and to just walk away by saying, you know all they do is cause each other pain um, and you know he also tells Thon, you know if you go through with this you're gonna regret it for the rest of your life which obviously we know he would but of course Thon does not listen and here it is guys the final battle between the flash and the reverse flash it happened. Barry and Thawne fought each other in Barry's childhood home, and Barry saved his younger self just like he was supposed to, and Thawne, of course, ended up killing Barry's mother. We also saw Season 1 Barry time travel there, but we didn't see any Flashpoint Barry or Flashpoint Thawne, so maybe Flashpoint just is like a race from the timeline or something like I don't know I'm not really sure uh, but anyway season 9 Barry tells season 1 Barry not to intervene just like original timeline flash told season 1 Barry that back in season 1 which was awesome that was so cool to see but the question so did season 9 Barry become the original timeline flash I I guess that's what we're gonna have to assume because that was never confirmed so Basically, what we're going to say now is that the Blue Crystal made it so Season 9 Barry, who already witnessed his mother's murder, become the original Timeline Flash. Wow, what what a way to go about things. That That is just insane. Uh, but Reverse Flash, of course, ends up realizing from Gideon that he's stuck in the year 2000 after all of this happens. And then he would, you know, go on to take over Harrison Wells' body and the events of Season 1 would play out from there. But we've always wondered what happened to original Timeline Flash after he saved his younger self. And what we see here is Barry come back to talk to Thawne again. And we hear Thawne say, you know, Barry's mother's death was a fixed point. And this is where Thawne realizes that Barry knew this would happen the whole time. And Thawne vows to get revenge on Barry like usual. But then Barry actually thanks Thawne for essentially giving him one more day with his parents before Barry is surrounded by the blue energy again. And he is sent somewhere else. We're gonna have to find out where that is uh in episode 11 but of course we do know that you know barry does not go back to the present from uh the episode 11 synopsis we know he's still missing in that episode uh, but anyways at the end of the episode we go to the future again and see rick Cosnet's character working at mercury labs where the power goes out and that's quickly followed by him getting struck by the negative speed force or red lightning at least um and it looked like it looked just like when barry was struck by lightning in season one which was a pretty cool scene uh, but of course this is where he becomes a villain or or presumably becomes a villain that being cobalt blue uh, but also after that he picks up a file off the ground and it, it seems like the file just appeared there and it shows eddie thon as deceased but then he but then you know rick Cosnet's character unexpectedly says who the hell is eddie thon which must mean this character here is malcolm thon the cobalt blue from the comics so what does that mean? Does that mean like Eddie Thon never existed or like he doesn't know who Eddie Thon is? Maybe um, maybe he's like, I don't I don't know. He's, he's got to be related to Eddie Thon somehow, though, right? Because that wouldn't really make sense if he wasn't. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens here. Maybe this is Eddie Thon. He just can't remember that or something along those lines. Uh, but I think it's looking pretty likely that this is going to be Malcolm Thon. But guys, wow, what an episode this I, I can't believe, I actually can't believe they did this. I mean, you know, obviously I thought this might be the finale of the show, but, th you know, this would, would have been a serviceable finale. I think this definitely would have worked. Um, but this episode, I think this is my favorite episode of the show. I did not think I would be saying that about an episode this late in the show, 
but this this episode was fantastic. This is n- n- hands down my favorite episode of the show. Um, I've been wanting them to do this for such a long time with the Flash and the Reverse Flash finale. Um, so yeah, this is just straight up awesome, and I am so glad they did this. So yeah, I mean, you know, the, the start to season nine is just terrible, but this these last two episodes make up for it. This was just amazing, and I really hope you guys think this episode was amazing too, because it's now my favorite episode, like I just said. Um, but anyways, I'd say that's about it, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to comment your thoughts on this video down below, as well as your thoughts on the episode. What did you guys think of it? I'm sure a lot of you guys love this episode. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.